premieres Sunday, 9, 8 central on ABC. Coming up on KCRG TV 9 News at 6, firefighters try to knock down a smoky fire at the old Farmstead Foods plant in Cedar Rapids. And a storm wiped out thousands of acres of crops in one eastern Iowa county. Now leaders there are asking for help. You are watching KCRG TV 9. Now from your 24-hour news source, this is KCRG TV 9 News at 6. Well, the scene is uh, much quieter tonight after an all-day fire that's been burning at the old Farmstead Foods meatpacking plant on 3rd Street Southeast in Cedar Rapids. Firefighters said they were on the scene shortly before 6.15 this morning. They've been rotating crews throughout the day. Firefighters knocked down the east wall of the building this afternoon to gain better access to the fire. KCRG TV9's Nicole Agee is live on the scene. Nicole, is that helping firefighters? Yeah, Beth, it sure is. In fact, if you look behind me right here, you can basically see right through one wall to another of this building. You can see the water also streaming down from the rooftop. That's because firefighters put a lot of water on this fire up until the time when they tore down that wall. They were only able to attack the fire from the outside. Now, at one point this afternoon, flames were shooting up 40 feet in the air. You don't see any flames now, but you still see that thick black smoke coming off from the top of the building. That's the tar from the ceiling. Now, there's also a lot of cardboard inside that building, and that cardboard is expected to smolder for days. Firefighters rushed inside the old meatpacking plant and quickly put out several fires on the first floor. But flames still burning above them forced crews out of the building. The smoke was so heavy coming out of the second and third floors, and the ceiling started to collapse above the first floor. It should have been shut down years ago, and they should have leveled it. Stanley Dowd used to deliver livestock to the meatpacking plant. He says it's been a fire hazard since it shut down more than 20 years ago and an unsafe shelter for the homeless. A place where a lot of the homeless people have been living at, you know, off and on for the years, and it's a waste of money. Dowd says this used to be a vibrant area when the plant was still operating. It you know, a pretty good community back then, but it went down the hill since the flood and that before. The last known business to use this building was Lindstar Transfer, who used it as a distribution center for appliances like refrigerators. That's where the cardboard boxes came from that still smolder inside. Now you're looking at a live picture right now of the fire here. This is from the rooftop of our studio in downtown Cedar Rapids. Now Bulow says the smoke poses no danger to anyone in the area. Our newsroom took a lot of calls today about people who were very concerned over asbestos dangers or any possible chemical hazards that could be in there. But there are no evacuations ordered. In fact, there haven't been any evacuations all day. And again, Bulow does want to stress that the smoke does not pose a danger. Now firefighters say this fire is suspicious because there aren't a lot of power lines out here. But there's no electricity running through those lines. In fact, it's been that way for months, so they're not sure exactly how the fire could have started. But as soon as this scene is safe, they'll go inside, collect evidence, and try to find a cause. Reporting live in Cedar Rapids, Nicole Agee, KCRG TV9 News. Police investigators have subpoenaed two Iowa City men to find out what they witnessed during a shooting Friday night in Iowa City. It all started when a local homeless man, 26-year-old John Deng, stabbed Iowa City resident John Bonenkamp here on East Prentice Street. When Johnson County Sheriff's Deputy Terry Stotler arrived, he yelled a warning at Deng, but police say when Deng made another move with a knife, Stotler fatally shot him. Brock Brones and Mike Tibbetts told the Gazette Saturday that the homeless man did not threaten the deputy, which contradicts police reports. Police tell TV9 Brones and Tibbetts are now under a court order to meet with investigators and tell them what they did see and hear that night. Prior to his death, court documents show police had arrested John Dang several times for disorderly conduct, intoxication and theft. His most recent arrest was on July 11th for attempting to steal beer from the waterfront high V and for intoxication. Police say Deng was a habitual alcohol offender. Iowa City police are investigating the death of a homeless man they believe fell from an apartment building under construction. Police say a woman called them just before 6 this morning. She says she could see a man lying outside 228 East Court Street and was concerned about his welfare. KCRG TV9's Iowa City Jimmy Brinton joins us now live to explain what happened. Beth, please say the man was well known in this area. In fact, I'd interacted with him several times before. Witnesses tell police they saw the 55-year-old man around this building last night. This morning, a construction worker also called police after finding the man's body lying on the ground. 
The way his body was positioned and the injuries sustained indicate to police that he somehow fell from the building. Just how that happened is what police are trying to figure out. We're investigating, if that's what we want to know. Did he accidentally fall? Was somebody with him uh, that might have intentionally or unintentionally caused him to fall? Did he jump? Now, police say the man's death could be accidental. That's because they say some basic safety precautions aren't in place, like the bal balconies on the building still don't have railings around them. Police did find a man's belongings on one of the upper levels of the building, but would not confirm the details of those belongings, including if there was alcohol among those. Anyone who may have information about seeing the man in the area or this incident should contact police. Live in Iowa City, Jamie Brinton, KCRG, TV9 News. Iowa City police are also looking for two men who assaulted and tried to rob another man early this morning. Police found the victim in the 700 block of Bowery Street around 2.30 a.m. They say he was injured and conscious but not alert. An ambulance took him to university hospitals and clinics. Anyone with information about that attack should call Iowa City police. The Iowa City Council expects to vote on the future of two downtown bars tonight. Iowa City Police want to revoke the liquor licenses of the Fieldhouse and etc. Police Chief Sam Hargadine also wants to start enforcing a state law that's been around for years banning people underage from bars at night. He says any bar caught where police arrest a lot of underage drinkers like the Fieldhouse and etc. should lose the right to serve booze. We'll have more on tonight's City Council vote on the KCRG TV 9 News at 10. The Cedar Rapids area remembered Mark Taylor today and the 23 years he served as a Lynn County Sheriff's deputy. Law officers from around the state attended Deputy Taylor's visitation this afternoon. He died last Friday when his patrol car crashed, something brought on by a heart attack. Taylor was just 46 years old. Colleagues say the community always respected him. He was well liked by the public. Uh, I know that I've received several calls, um, especially since his death, of people calling just to remind me how much they appreciated him, either when he investigated an accident or took a call for service. Taylor's funeral will take place tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the First Assembly of God Church in Cedar Rapids. A Hudson man and his grandson are safe after an emergency helicopter landing in Fayette County. The Sheriff's Office says 61-year-old Thomas Jones lost power to a small homemade ultralight helicopter this morning. He managed to land safely near a cornfield. Farmers in Fayette County hope for a disaster declaration for their area. The county says last Friday's hailstorm damaged almost 330,000 acres of crops and destroyed 30,000 acres of that cropland. KCRG TV 9's Katie Wiedemann says the fast moving storm wiped out an entire season for dozens of farmers. At this particular Fayette County farm, just 15 minutes of hail wiped out more than 760 acres of corn. Kathy McMillan and her family own 1,100 acres worth of farmland. 85% of the crops on this farm are now scraps of what she says was on track to being a beautiful harvest. Now she has almost nothing left to feed their animals this fall. Fayette County Emergency Manager Mike McLeod says the storm damaged more than half the county in some way. He says more than 300,000 acres were damaged. 30,000 of those acres are destroyed. Because the damage is so widespread and affected so many farmers, McMillan says she's worried about the trickle-down impact the damage will have on the rest of the county. Which means the co-op's not going to have drying. The local implements who gear up in the fall and the spring to do all this work are going to have no work to do. Today, emergency management coordinators here in Fayette County are trying to get the state to declare this area as a disaster area. That way, some farmers can get some help financially to help clean up this mess. In Fayette County, Katie Wiedemann, KCRG TV 9 News. Fayette County Emergency Manager uh, Mike McLeod says he's working with other counties that also had storm damage to ask the state for a disaster declaration. A Cedar Rapids couple has donated $1 million to help flood victims rebuild their neighborhoods block by block. And the goal is to bring about eight individual blocks back to normal by the end of this year. KCRG TV 9's Mark Geary is in our newsroom to explain. Mark? Bruce and Beth, the Block by Block program will help flood victims with anything ranging from painting to foundation work. John and Diane Smith donated $1 million to this new effort to get the project rolling. Other organizations like the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation, United Methodist Church, Matthew 25, and Four Oaks have also contributed money and resources. 
The program will help flood victims put the finishing touches on their homes through financial and volunteer support. The Smiths say they've always wanted to do something to help their community for quite a long time. The neighborhoods that were so affected negatively by the floods weren't coming back as quickly as at least I thought they should. To think that they thought that the community forgot them is just heart-wrenching to me. If you'd like more information about this program, how it works, and how you can bring it to your neighborhood, we have a link on our website, kcrg.com. Bruce? Thanks, Mark. And we have still much more to come tonight. It was a quiet and cool July day. Will it stay that way? The first alert forecast is coming up. And Iowans are often willing to lend a helping hand whenever needed, and a new report shows just how much. And some students are getting to eat the fruit of their labors. Stay with your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV 9. Live, on air, and online from your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV 9, Bruce Owney, Beth Malicki, Meteorologist Joe Winters and John Campbell Sports. This is KCRG TV 9 News at 6. The Isle Casino and Hotel at Waterloo, Iowa welcomes you to experience all of the action. Hit the slots, play the tables, all the action, all the time. Dine in style. Then rest up and do it again. Win your share of $20,000 in cash and gas in the Gas Up and Go Cash and Gas Giveaway every Sunday in August from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Only at the Isle Casino Hotel Waterloo. Your everyday getaway. Jack and Hi, I'm Shelly Storla. Join us Sunday mornings at 10 for Ira Realty's Home Buyer's Guide right here on KCRG TV 9. Eating fresh produce grown locally is something many of us look forward to every summer. Well, a new program at the University of Iowa allows students to learn the art of gardening and to eat what they grow. This new one-third acre student garden has, I guess, every vegetable you can possibly grow here in Iowa. Everything from corn to carrots and squash to, as you see, sunflowers. Twice a week, these uh, vegetables go to the Iowa Memorial Union, where the cooks there use them in the meals they're preparing for students. They use the food in the menus that they've already decided to use that day. So it could go into the salad bar, it could go into a ratatouille or um, uh, into a soup, all sorts of different things. This is the first year students have participated in this field to market experiment and student gardeners say it's a great way for Hawkeyes to experience eating locally grown food. Iowa ranks among the best in the nation when it comes to volunteerism. Iowa ranks fifth in the nation for volunteer service rates. Iowa City, Waterloo and Des Moines are among the top 10 cities. Cedar Rapids ranked 14th among, among mid-sized cities and that's according to a report released by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Iowa is the only state to have three cities in the top 10 overall rankings. We have outstanding volunteers see here. see that all yeah. the time. A little quiet in the weather tonight across eastern Iowa. Joe has the complete forecast coming up. Stay with your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV 9. It's big. It's huge. No, it's grand. Don't miss it. Homemaker's grand opening, beginning Friday, July 31st. Meskwaki welcomes the Beach Boys for a fabulous concert event on August 14th. Welcome back. Cool weather for the month of July. It's what we've become accustomed to this year, and we're going to end the month on a cool note. In fact, it could be a record note. Normally in Cedar Rapids, our average temperature for the month of July is about 74.5. So far this year, we're at 68.4. No July on record in Cedar Rapids has ever averaged less than 70 degrees. We could be record cold this July overall for our average high and low right now at 68.4. We'll keep an eye on it and let you know as we head toward the end of the month. Even though it's cool, it certainly is quiet. Take a look at our decor. A city cam, 75 degrees, northwest winds at 9, the dew point down to 55, a rising barometer 29.78. In Parkersburg right now, just a few clouds on the horizon with 75 from our city cam, a dew point of 52, a falling barometer. Those dew points giving you an idea of how cool we'll get tonight. Down to 55 right now in Independence with a current temperature of 72. Northwest winds at 7 and a quiet sky in Tama. 71 degrees. Northwest winds at 10. That dew point 
49 degrees. Comfortably, can comfortably cool and still below normal. It'll stay that way for tomorrow. In fact, much of the week will stay below normal. A pleasant Wednesday, lots of sunshine as you'll see. Late in the day, some clouds start to build as our chances return for some showers and storms on Thursday. And also some chances for the weekend. If you're making some plans, here's your early outlook. Late Saturday, there's a front moving through with some scattered storms. A better chance of storms on Sunday. Highs back in the lower 80s as we begin the month of August on a bit of a wet note, especially on Sunday. Satellite and radar for tonight shows the clouds that have been drifting through some high thin cloudiness across much of northeastern Iowa, little thicker clouds down to the south. That's where that cold front has moved. That move through yesterday brought us the severe weather across eastern Iowa, southwestern areas of Wisconsin, and continues to push off toward the south and east. That front moves away, but there's another one moving in, as we can see, back off to the west, comes in as an area of low pressure with some moisture. As that low moves a bit closer, the clouds increase first. That's late Wednesday into Wednesday night. Then on Thursday, this moisture moves over us. Pinpoint future cast times it out for you pretty nice. Tonight, mostly clear skies develop statewide, and then we'll stay mostly clear as we start our Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon, some Partly cloudy skies build, I think. And then you look as we head through the evening hours out west, some showers start to develop. And finally, during the overnight hours, some of those showers move in. That's the first wave of moisture that will affect us on Thursday with those scattered showers and storms. 50s for lows tonight, maybe even a couple of upper 40s. We'll have to keep our eye on that. 51 degrees, clear, cool conditions in Waterloo with northwest winds at 4 to 8. Tomorrow off near 80 degrees, warmer 82 degrees in Washington. Mostly sunny, pleasant conditions, very light west wind right around 5 to 10. Thursday right now looks wet at least the first half of the day. Second half of Thursday may be dry with 75. 78 on Friday. Heading into the weekend, as we showed you, we start with some areas of clouds building, some scattered storms late Saturday, and then again on and off on Sunday. Highs in the lower 80s, and early next week we're down in the 70s with lows in the 50s. All right, thank you very much, Joe. Coming up, highlights from the state baseball tournament. And you'll hear from Iowa State football coach Paul Rhodes. It's coming up on your 24-hour news source, TV9. KCRG TV9 weather is brought to you by BirdNowTV.com. Were you in a serious... Now, Money Line. A look at the markets and stocks of local interest. Brought to you by Jim Miller Nissan Subaru. Leaving home or thinking about renting for your first time, Kelly Property Management can help you find the perfect home or apartment. Choose from over a thousand rental units to accommodate your needs and budget. There's something for everyone, for every budget. We've been helping people just like you for over 30 years. Call one of our leasing agents to set up an appointment. Learn more by going to kcrg.com, click on your first time, and then click on Kelly Property Management. The people to call when you're ready to rent. Hi, everybody. Forget all the speculation. Brett Favre has told the Vikings he's not coming out of retirement to play for them or anybody else. Iowa State's Paul Rhodes continues his indoctrination as the man taking over a football program that has lost 10 straight games. Rhodes told reporters at the Big 12 Media Day that he hopes what he hopes to do. Well, I, I think my vision is, is developing a championship program, developing a, a, a team of, of uh, winning football and, and, and winning players and quality young men. I think that vision uh, takes place uh, one day at a time and one season at a time and certainly has no uh, uh, win-loss expectations that, that are placed upon it uh, from day one. 
11 years ago, Kirk Ferentz was in Paul Rhodes' shoes. Now he's one of the Big Ten's veteran coaches. He told reporters in Chicago that he takes nothing for granted. That I uh, remain extremely appreciative. I've been this way for a long time. This is my going to be my 20th year at Iowa. I've been treated extremely well from day one back in 1981 when I was a kind of snot-nosed uh, kid showed up there, and uh, uh, it's just been a great place. You know, for my family, it's been a great place for me professionally, and I'm extremely appreciative of, uh, uh, you know, the way Iowa's treated me. Turning now to baseball, 3A schools dominate the state tournament action in Des Moines. Earlier this afternoon, Norwalk defeated Decorah 4-1. to Matt Nelson has the report. Coach Dennis Olenzak and the Vikes checking out some great defense in this one. Top two with a runner on second. Nathan Jones drives one to center, but Robbie Jewell robs him to end the inning and the threat. Bottom three in Norwalk up one to nothing. Tyler Smith knocks it into right. Luke Kane comes in just ahead of the ball and it's tied at one. Top four in Norwalk takes the lead on this two run single off the bat of Chase Breezer. Eric Smith scores, so does Marcus Littleton. Three to one Warriors. Hawkeye signee and Pirates 26th round draft pick Matt Dermody was adding up the K's. He struck out 13, including a huge run of three in a row in the bottom of the fifth. The bases were loaded, and Dermody K'd his way out of the jam. Norwalk adds a run in the seventh and beats Decora four to one. We needed more timely hits at the right time during our innings. We had, we'd have those one or two big hits in the inning, but then when it really mattered, we couldn't come down and get that hit like we needed to. I hate to lose. I still feel I'm a competitive person. It's still fun to be around young people, and this was a good group of young people that worked hard for me. So the season comes to an end for the Decorah Vikings with a 22-14 and 14 record and an appearance here at the state baseball tournament. In Des Moines, Matt Nelson, KCRG, TV9 Sports. Thank you, Matt. Also this afternoon, Boone beat Sheraton 12 to nothing in 5. Coming up tonight, Vinton Shellsburg takes on Denison Schleswig, and at 8 o'clock, it's Benton Community taking on Storm Lake, and we hope to have some highlights at 10 o'clock for those games. Beth that's doesn't good. like saying Schleswig. That's, Schleswig. that's yeah. tricky. That's, that's tough. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks. We'll be right back. Stay with us. KCRG TV9 Sports is brought to you by Pat McGrath Chevy Land. In the mad Our top story tonight, smoke has all but stopped coming out of the old Farmstead Foods meatpacking plant next to the Cedar River on 3rd Street Southeast in Cedar Rapids. Firefighters say no toxic chemicals are burning there. The small fire will be smoldering probably for some time, though there have been no evacuations. We'll have continued updates on KCRG.com and tonight on our news at 10. And no rain to help with that, eh? No, not at all. And the wind's light, so that can help out. Certainly, it'll stay light and very quiet weather-wise heading through the evening. A clear night eventually. 65 at 9, 59 degrees at midnight, 53 by tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining us for KCRG TV 9 News at 6. Hope to have you with us again tonight at 10. Until then, have a great evening. KCRG photojournalist Matt Nelson on a 6,000 mile journey. It's KCRG TV 9's ballparks of the Midwest League. If the Cedar Rapids Colonels make a stop there, so will Matt along with his camera to show you how other cities in the league play ball as the home team. Join us all summer long for KCRG TV 9's ballparks of the Midwest League. Watch ballparks of the Midwest with Matt Nelson tomorrow at 6 only on KCRG TV 9. The downtown farmers markets are back and bigger and better than ever. 160 market vendors will offer produce, meat, wines, flowers, and artisan gifts. There will be live entertainment, wine tasting, and cooking demonstrations. The downtown farmers market. Saturday, August 1st in Cedar Rapids. It's family movie day. Captain Moon, Season Baby Dreams. According to Tonight at 6:30 on TV.